and welcome back to Tell Samira. So today we're going to talk about the narcissistic friend, the eternal victim. If you've ever had a narcissistic friend, I know you know what I'm talking about. So just sit back and relax as I tell you all about my story. And hopefully you can glean something from this so you don't be in these bad situations with these people trying to figure out what's going on because you can take what I'm telling you and hopefully apply this. So if you have not already done so, please subscribe and like this video and also hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever my videos drop. And I'd love to hear your comments in the uh, section below. So let's get to it. So the narcissistic friend, the eternal uh, victim. The reason I say that they're victims is because when I first meet, meet these people, uh, the first thing they start telling is about their sob stories, about who hurt them, the boyfriend they had that did them bad, how they were always giving, and a boyfriend left them and found somebody else. Uh, the narcissistic friend that I talked about before, I've done a video on it. If you don't know what a narcissist is, you should check out my video that's called uh, Traits of a Narcissistic Friend. So anyway, the narcissistic friend that I had, uh, when, when I was getting to know her, because she's a relative of a family member of mine, so I didn't know her well. We didn't grow up in the same city or the same state. So when I met her years ago, it was very brief. We may have hung out maybe two times. And, you know, she was a decent person, but, you know, I didn't really know her well. So I reached when I moved out of L.A. somewhere else and I wanted to come back to L.A., I needed a place to stay because I already had a job. So she said, hey, I can come stay with her, pay half of the rent or whatever. And so, you know, I was like, okay, cool. I wanted to come back to L.A. Hey, what a perfect opportunity. So when I came back, I noticed and, and, and the person I was at the time was so hurt, I would just tell people about the hurt that I experienced. And that was the first problem there. When you don't really get know people, it's not the time to start talking about all your trauma. What I mean is you were raped, uh, molested, or you just have a history of attracting narcissists or sociopaths or whatever, and they've done you wrong. People that are ma manipulators, they sit back and they listen to that because they it gives them... Um, evidence on how they can play you meaning that they know that you um, have a history of being um you know bullied and just mistreated they know that you probably haven't fully healed and maybe they can mistreat you maybe they can get some um money or other resources or favors from you because you got a history of being played so they're like huh this person, you know, I'm, I'm going to see if I can play them too. You know, they're like just sitting back trying to see what they can do. And then you just being so open in this empath or whatever it's called. And, you know, you're just telling people this, not understanding that not everybody has your heart. Not everybody um, comes into relationships with pure intentions. Even if it's the same sex, you know, they still... Oh, try, if it's a narc, they're trying to get what they can get out of you. So I did that. You know, I told her all this. I even told her how her cousin, who was my um, family member, you know, um, had done me wrong, which she did. And so, you know, eventually I found out that those two were on the phone talking about me. And then the um, narc friend came back and was like, you know, I talked to her. And the thing she said just seems like she really wanted to be a mother figure to you and that she really cared. See, that should have been the sign, right? Right there that this was not someone for me because I was almost um, like over 35 so how's you telling me that some other grown woman who I told you were doing me wrong uh, is telling you that they wanted to treat me um, like a mother figure see that was the problem there why did that narcissist think that it was okay she used mother figure mother figure could mean someone who's telling you what to do or someone also who is controlling you trying to guide you sweetie boo boo I didn't need that I was already over the other side of 35 so that was one of the problems uh, there she identified with somebody with who was my abuser and talking behind my back with her so you know I look back now and I figure the way she played me like she did because she talked to one of my abusers so not only was I naive to give her all this information she got it from my abuser but the reason that I say that the perf the um the eternal victim is because she constantly was telling me about these men who she tried to help. She wanted them just to be their best selves and 
one guy was an engineer and he wasn't working as much and she was trying to tell him how he could get a better job and she wanted him to branch out and I believe like work for himself and just do better and not just wait around for his job to call him back and how he started sending her all these inappropriate texts and she only wanted to be a good friend to him even though she knew it, he didn't want a serious relationship and then so she had even told me how her family member despised him because she had told him told them how bad he had done her and you know I was just totally buying uh, buying this and just eating it all up like so dramatic involved too involved in somebody else's situation problem number two for me so I was just like, oh my God, he said that you want me to go over there and knock it on his, at his door because he lived in a complex. He shouldn't be sending you such tests, blah, 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 you know, and she was like, oh, you would do that. Don't do it, but would you, you know, so that's the thing. They look for people that's gullible, that's too concerned about what's going on. It's okay to show people that you're concerned, but to the point that I didn't even know this man, and, and I know there's uh, two sides to every story, but I guess I had thrown that uh, wisdom out the window when I was doing dealing with her and it was like look that is not my deal who knows what she had done to him and then she just kept going on as I stayed there for six months constantly telling me about this man that man this person and she can't believe she's let people live with her and then when she needed them they left her and they did this and I didn't stop to think like wow the common denominator in this whole situation was her you know, why, what about her? Um, does she keep attracting all these negative people who are doing her wrong? I never st started to think about that, but I'm going to tell you what made me start thinking about the uh, part she played in this is when she started turning on me. Now, when we would be in front of her sister, her sister didn't live there or any other people, you would think we were the best of friends because we acted like it like we would joke we would have good times you know and this is how the narcissist tricks you into this whole manipulation uh web if that's such a thing you know it's like a domestic violence relationship when they first the honeymoon phase they they first get to know you and they may try to buy you stuff even if you're not asking or wanting it and you know and always so kind and playful in the life of the party and you're just like ah having a good time but then that devaluation phase comes when they're starting to um poke you know poke, poke at you they because you've already talked too much and let them know where all your wounds are every regret you have in life everything you feel guilty and so now they already know how to play you and manipulate you so they know what buttons to push and so they're now they're starting to do it when nobody's around and you're like well what's going on you know it's confusing because this is the same person like we just had a great time and then you you're like arguing with them and they love it you know you're not understanding it you're trying to be an adult and communicate what's ticking you off and then they don't care that you're upset you're angry there they try to flip it on you like is something wrong with you it must be true if you're so triggered or touched by this I mean what is it about what I'm saying is this something that's sensitive for it they know it's sensitive but they keep doing it but anyway so th this whole victim role that they have going on you start to see that, wait, something's wrong here. Because now you're treating me how you were telling me everybody else was treating you. See, they leave out that piece. Um, all you know, it's very convenient for them to leave it out. They don't tell you that the reason why people are treating them mean and have discarded them is because they've been treating people like garbage. They're jealous individuals. They um they ha haven't accomplished um a lot. Uh, well, not all of them. I won't say they are some successful narcissists, but I'm saying um this particular one that was my friend you know she couldn't hold down a job had told me for like she said for about the last 10 years she kept getting fired from jobs and this was another red flag like I didn't think I, I started to wonder like why does this woman keep getting fired for jobs and the therapist and me came out like well what are they saying I mean what is the reason and she's like I don't know I don't know they're not telling me which I knew it was a lie because I worked in management and I know when you fire people sometimes a lot of places there's a paper trail and with a paper trail there comes ink and it lets you know why they're firing you and the things that they want to see improve. So I knew that was a lie, but see, the thing was, I was not trusting myself enough. I didn't want to come off as judgmental. I didn't want to um, really believe that this victim 
um, had caused all her own problems. You know, I just wanted to still hang in there, you know, but the thing is, is once she showed me who she was, common sense should have kicked in and got me away from her. But I'm like, oh no, you know, just buying it. People are treating her wrong and she seems so nice. But like I said, the more I got to know her, the more that mask began to come off. And let me tell you the crazy making piece of this whole victim hood they have in this whole just the narcissistic personality disorder is that when her sister or other people would come back over she would try to act like she was nice again of course she would do little jabs but only me and her would know it would be a jab see that was the thing because she would hope that I would say something that would make me look crazy in front of other people so she could truly play a victim again once she discarded me fully could be like well yeah you see how she would do like just snap off at me but people around when if they would wouldn't know what it was but I would know she was um, poke, trying to poke at me because it was things that I told her I didn't want to discuss or that were off limits you know Another way that they play that victim is, is the way they treat you. If you um, do that mirror effect on them, meaning you start treating them the way they treat you, oh, they're going to get mad. They're not going to tolerate it, okay, because they're going to have some boundaries of self-respect and self-love for themselves, honey. They're not going to allow you to treat them how you how they treat you. So, for instance, like I have brought up something one time because I know it hurt her. It was right after she had done something like that to me. And she was all like, oh, just totally offended, like, oh, Oh my God, you know, who was I to do that? Oh, so just wrong. Why would I want to do that to her? Oh my God, you know? eventually I got tired of everything that was going on because it was constant arguments that she was always trying to start you know she was expecting me to wash her dishes we'd have um, a plan or who was going to take the garbage out for what we she tried to pretend like she didn't know that it was her week and like why you ain't taking out the trash you know all kind of stuff just trying to cause drama so after six months I had enough money and I was moving and I gave her a month's advance but she had just gotten fired of course from another job and she tried to play this thing the victim saying to me like oh my goodness you're doing me like other people have done you see that I'm down on my luck and now you pick this time to move and I told her I said look I told you already that I was moving this is nothing that should be um, a surprise to you I said that after I had enough money I was going to move you asked me at the beginning to give you a month's notice I have given you a month's notice actually it was more than a month so I said I've already done what you've asked me to do but see that was her narrative of all along so um is that she wanted to um do me just like she was doing everyone else so what i learned from this is is of course like um when she showed me who she was in the beginning that's what I should have understood that who she was you know and, and I'm not just saying just because people um play that victim role that they're definitely a narcissist no of course there's other traits to make a person a narcissist but what I learned is this is that um like I said why is it that you are always her being a narcissist uh, constantly picking the same people constantly in the same role that should let me know uh that this is not the person for me and even Robert Green my one of my favorite authors even says avoid the unlucky the they're infectious meaning that their depression their sadness their misery their victimhood will just um just trap you or also just um sort of roll off on you you know it's like those kind of people know leave them alone because they love to be unhappy and this is their narrative this is who they are you can come along and um they just want you they, they will turn around and start telling people that you have treated them wrong you know so get away from these people if you can it's nothing you can do to save them like I wanted to jump in and try to help you know this was another reason that I was a target trying to be overly helpful to people oh well this one did you like this I want to make sure I don't do you can I help you can I help you and I help you you know and people those narcs baby they love that you know and these victims you know they're like oh my goodness I got somebody they believe the story they bought into us, you know. Not, I'm not saying that all people that go with that whole victim story are manipulators, but I'm saying that it's a problem that they have, you know, and that if you don't want to be a part of their next victimhood story, that you need to get yourself out of the way because these people have made this a part of their character. This is who they are. Like I've had another friend who was like that, not a narc, but I tried to get to know this woman and get her to talk about other stuff. But the only thing she could talk about was who did her wrong. This one did her wrong. 
that one did or wrong this one. And I'm sure after I start, stopped talking to her, she was there to tell people that I did or wrong. Why? Because this is this woman's narrative. This is who she, she embraces. This is what she was. So like I say, you know, tr trust your gut. The whole time I was feeling around that narcissist, like something is wrong with this situation. Why is all these men leaving her and then getting another woman and doing better? What is going on with her? Even with the whole job, she kept on talking about, oh, this job, this place is doing this. The people there are doing this. They don't like me because I'm happy. They don't like me because of this. And she was so distraught over all this stuff. Then the more I would hear her talk about work, I could hear she was acting freaking crazy. People didn't want to be around her. She needed all this attention and the spotlight to be on her. So she would do and say all kind of things just to bring that um, attention to her. And people with healthy, healthy self-esteem wasn't trying to play that. They saw who she was on new jobs and they were trying to get the heck away from her. So it wasn't that they were the problem. They understood she was the problem and they were not playing into the craziness that she wanted. So one thing I would say ways to protect yourself from people uh, like from these narcissistic friends is understanding that when you're first meeting people not telling them your traumas I know it may be a part of who you are and you and they done this so long but you don't need to t divulge everything to people when you first meet them and we got to come out of this where I'm keeping it 100 and I'm being authentic you know what you can be a hunt keep it 100 and be authentic without having to tell people you were raped you were molested your mother abused you your father did this uh you can't um maintain a good relationship friendship romantic or whatever that's not everybody's business keep things light for as long as you can get in to go out with people and see who they are how they treat other people seeing if there's a pattern with this person are they always the victim is something always wrong are they always being fired are they always losing a friend are they always being kicked out of their apartment are they always having to borrow money and never have enough money and always leeching off somebody are they always forgetting their wallet seeing who these people are and once you see this um pattern the I mean, not pattern. Don't stay around for the pattern to leave. Because when I tell you so many people get to talking about, well, I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge. And uh, excuse me, but those be some of the most naive people. You need to judge. Forget society telling you don't judge. When you see something that does not work, you need to be wise enough to say, look, this is something I don't want in my life. Look, somebody else can deal with it, but I'm not. I see this. I've seen it for the last 20 years with other people I've allowed in my space. And this is not something I want for me. That is smart judgment. Okay. To understand that, Hey, I'm creating a different path for myself. Another thing that I suggest for people to do is something that I do. If I attract a narcissist, I look after the fact I realized it was a narcissist and I've hung around them for a while and felt like they've got gotten over on me. I'm examining what went wrong. Why? Because our brain is wired to protect us. And when we have these situations where it went all bad for us, the brain will not allow you to stop thinking about it because it, the brain wants to make sure that you are not this naive again in the future because maybe there's stuff that you did overlook. Now, there is, of course, times where this person probably tricked you and you didn't know what happened, but if it continues to happen, you are the common denominator and it's something about you that's maintaining and attracting, that's keeping these people because a narcissist is, can be found in every part, every kind of job, every apartment, wherever. We all meet them, but the thing is, is something about certain of us that keep them, whereas other people see who they are and discard them. Like, okay, I see who you are, sweetie. I'm going, but some of us are like, oh, I see you're a narcissist. Come, let me love you. We got to stop that. So I get that from Jordan Peterson, how he said that the brain is trying to wake us up so we don't be naive again because the brain is like, I can't go through this hurt anymore. You're going to have to do better. And that's why you probably can't sleep at night. That's why you keep having these um, obsessive thoughts about what happened with, between you and your abuser because your brain is like, look, you made mistakes and you don't need to make these again. Red alert, red alert, caution, caution, learn from your mistake, learn, learn. 
That's how I imagine the brain is. So uh, with that being said, again, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Don't forget to share this video. Why? Because we want to get the word out so people can know these toxic individuals that are out here and so you can be protected, understanding that no... Um, you're not crazy, you know, even though they tried to make you think you're crazy. Uh, if you'd like an individual consultation with me, please see the link below for Visibook. You will see the dates and time that I have available in Visibook. will also let you know how much I charge for services. Only because we're dealing with a situation like this, if you could feel you continue to attract narcissists, um, whether it's a romantic relationship, um, even if it's friendships, your parents, I can help you with that. I also have a degree in psychology, so I can also help if it's just dealing with sadness, depression, anxiety, other issues uh, that you may want to discuss. I can also help with that as well. Uh, but like I said, click on the link in Visibook. And I, the reason I try to do the consultation is, is because if you've had these relationships for a long time, you probably have a whole bunch to type in the comment section that's too much to be in the comment section and would best serve you by trying to actually look at why you are attracting these type of people what you can do right now to try to get yourself out of this relationship and if you can't leave which I understand some can't we can talk about things you can do to maintain your peace so that's a little more than can be done in the comment section so like I said please feel free to reach out and the link to my book I should should have worn a curtain, a tale of bulimia, self-loathing, and romance by Samira Alexander can also be found in a link and it is available on Amazon. Thank you. Bye.